Hello, I'm Darren Grimes. This is GB News. Thank you for your company. I'm delighted to say I'm joined at ARC Conference by Paul Kelly, editor-at-large at The Australian and, safe to say, one of Australia's most loved columnists. Paul, thank you very much for your time today. Very good to be with you. What have you thought so far then? We're talking a lot about responsible citizenship here. Do you think actually you're going to leave here a responsible citizen, Paul? This meeting is a grand experiment. We've got 1,500 delegates meeting outside London, coming from about 70 countries, the main countries being the UK, the United States and Australia. And the subject for discussion is very wide ranging. If I had to identify the central organising principle, it's the feeling that our Western civilization is in trouble, that it is a civilizational moment we are facing internal decline and the purpose of this meeting is to talk about the problem and also discuss about how we address this. Now that is a pretty remarkable event, the idea that you would have so many people coming together to talk about the cultural foundations of the West, but that's what it's about. And this is tied into the idea of more individual responsibility and a greater, a greater sense of citizenship a greater sense of, of citizenship, responsibility and empowerment. Paul, do you think mass migration has a problem with that idea of citizenship and shared citizenship? Do you think actually that's been a real problem for the West, as many viewers feel that way? I think one of the great challenges for Western societies is that they tend to be immigrant nations. So we take a significant number of migrants but there are two questions here. The first question is, does this work economically? And the related question is, are these migrants being integrated into our societies? Do we have a sense of shared common values? And yeah. this is particularly pertinent at the moment, given the crisis in the Middle East, given what we've seen in London in recent weeks, large scale demonstrations. So I think a fundamental question here is whether the sense of shared values can be maintained in Western societies. Now, I think that is possible with significant degrees of immigration, but we have to change our settlement policies. There's got to be a much greater emphasis on the need for shared values and for the capacity of migrants to integrate into the broader community. I mean, we saw outside the Sydney Opera House, did we not? People saying horrendous things gas the Jews, it was the really nasty rhetoric coming from a group of activists immediately after what had happened on October 7th in Israel. Do you worry that people like that will never ever be able to integrate properly into Western societies and Western cultures? Well, I think that's a major problem and there was a tremendous political uproar in Sydney and in Australia about what happened. It was completely unacceptable, the idea that you would have a group of people going to the Opera House the Opera House sales were lit up with the Israeli flag and the idea was that the Jewish population of Sydney could come to the Opera House where they would be respected given the crisis in Israel. Instead of that what happened was they were told by the police to stay away and, and, and we had a demonstration with a lot of people uh, taking a very anti-Semitic approach yes. in the demonstration. So this became a very significant political issue and I might say the Premier of New South Wales responded in a very effective way but that highlights the point we're making. The point we're making is in these Western societies can we hold together because they are multicultural societies but the question is, the question is, is the major problem facing the West the external challenge, whether we're talking now about Russia, China, Iran, North Korea, or is the major challenge an internal, cultural one based on the fragmentation of our societies? And that really, I think, is the major, is, is the major subject of this discussion, of this meeting. Now, just finally, because I know you're a popular man, you've got <laughs> places to be and people to see, but what would you like the takeaway to be from this when you've speak to Western leaders, you know, reading about the events such as this one, what would you like them to understand and learn and value from this conference? I think the main message is we've got to rethink our values, 
we've got to rethink the way we operate and we've got to look at how we restore trust between governing elites on the one hand and people on the other hand. These are very significant challenges. Now, the point I'd make about this meeting, and I've got to be careful because this is just the first day of the three-day meeting, but it seems to me, at least so far, that this is not a primarily a political meeting. It's not a political organisation. It's not primarily about policy, although policy is being discussed. And of course, policy varies across all the countries here anyway. But what I think the meeting is primarily about is it's looking at the principles that should underpin Western democracy. It's looking at the foundations of Western democracy and essentially it's saying, we've got to get these foundations right because they're not right at the moment. And I think, I think public sense this. Publics are dissatisfied. They're not happy. They know there's a problem with their society. And I think the interesting thing about this meeting is it's honest enough to, to start to confront the problem and have a discussion about them. Well, Paul, I'm sure I speak for all of our viewers when I say Paul Kelly for Prime Minister. That's what we need. <laughs> Thank you for your time. Thank you very much.